justifies the ungodly. La fe le es contada por justicia. The faith, right? La fe, we learned that. Le means to him. We haven't learned that. The faith to him es contada is counted por justicia, por, for righteousness. So in Spanish, that last phrase is said a little different than in English. We would say his faith is counted for righteousness. Here it's the faith to him is kind of right. So it's a little bit of a grammatical difference. And it kind of has to do with what we're going to learn about today, which is kind of a little bit of a difficult concept we're going to work on today, which is reflexive verbs. Okay? Now, let's go through our vocabulary. Well, we're not going to go through our vocabulary list because we're going to learn about the reflexive verbs, and that's what all of our vocabulary list has to do with. So first I want to just explain to you in English what a reflexive verb is. Now, in English we use this very little. In Spanish they use it a lot more. So I'm going to start with something that we use in English. Let's say we were using the, the verb to wash something, right? Now, if I wanted to say, I wash the car, okay? This is my subject, this is my verb, right? And this is the object, okay? That's the thing that's receiving the action, right? Well, sometimes the thing that's receiving the action is the same as the subject. That's when we have a reflexive verb. So, if, if I were to say this in English, I wash myself, okay, this would be reflexive because the subject and the object are the same. Or we could say, he washes himself, right? 
So reflexive verbs are when the object is the same as the subject. Now, this is used a lot more often in Spanish. Let me give you some examples. Look down at your handout under the grammatical concept that says reflexive verbs. The first one is lavarse, which means to wash oneself. Now, if we remember in Spanish, the verb for to wash is lavar, okay? Now, if we were to say, I wash the car, it would be lavo el coche. You know, coach, car, okay? Lavo el coche, I wash the car. But if I wanted to say, I wash myself, then we're going to use this pronoun, and I'm going to draw the chart for you of the pronouns that are used. These are the reflexive pronouns, okay? And they mean myself, yourself, himself, ourselves, themselves, right? So this would be the equivalent of myself, me, okay? The equivalent of yourself would be te. The equivalent of his self would be se, okay? The equivalent of ourselves would be nos, and the equivalent of themselves would again be se. So basically, these are the four words that you need to memorize for this. Me, te, se, and nos. Okay? So, where does this go in the sentence? If I want to say I wash myself in Spanish, I would say this. Me lavo. So the myself comes first. Okay? Me lavo means I wash myself. Does that make sense to everybody? So, how would we say, because you know how to obviously conjugate AR verbs in the, first, in, the, in the present tense, how would I say, he washes himself? Let's start with the word he. Okay. El. What's going to come next? He washes himself. El. Se. You're right, because the se is going to come before the verb. El. Se. Lava. Okay? So, when we're dealing with reflexive verbs, we just need to remember that the reflexive pronoun comes be right before the verb. Okay? So it's me lavo. El se lavo. Got it? Now, when we write this in the infinitive form, though, and remember the infinitive form is like this, unconjugated, which means, you know, lavar is to wash. Right? Well, to write the infinitive of a reflexive verb, we actually have a different infinitive, we just call it lavarse. You just basically take the same infinitive and throw a se on the end, right? Lavarse would mean to wash oneself. Okay? Because it's reflexive. Lavar is not reflexive. Lavarse is to wash oneself, and we just stick one of these pronouns in front of the verb. Make sense? Okay, now, that's the, that's the easy part, okay, because that's exactly the same as in English. But now we're going to get into some situations where we use the reflexive in Spanish where we don't use in English. Here's the most famous one. When you want to ask someone, what is your name? Okay? You're going to use this reflexive verb right here. Llamar means to call. Llamarse means to call oneself. Okay? So instead of saying in Spanish, my name is Stephen, I would say I call myself Stephen. They just phrase it a little bit differently. Okay, so if I wanted to say my name is Stephen, I would say me llamo. Okay, so I've got my reflexive pronoun, I've got my verb, me llamo Esteban. Me llamo Esteban, okay? Now if I want to ask someone, what is your name? Then I would say, Como te llamas? And then we got to have the upside down question mark at the beginning, right? How do you call yourself, right? Como te llamas? Me llamo Esteban. Okay, so let's try this a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to go through and just, I'm going to ask you what your name is. You tell me what your name is, okay? Como te llamas? Uh, me llamo Eric. Perfect. Como te llamas? Me llamo Mateo. Okay, now we're going to switch to the formal, which would be Como se llama? 
Because remember, the, the usted form gets the third person singular, right? So it would be, como se llama usted. Okay? So I'm going to ask you that. I'm going to be a little more formal with this side of the room. You know, como se llama usted? Me llamo esta bien. You don't have to say es, though. Because what you're saying is, I call myself is David. Get rid of the is, because you're not saying my name is. You're just saying, I call myself David. So just try it again. Me llamo David. Me llamo David. Excelente. Yeah, me llamo Ricardo. Me llamo Ricardo. Okay. Como se llama usted? Me llamo David. Perfect. Okay. So everybody got that? So that's pretty common. You probably heard that, because that's one of the first things you learn in most Spanish classes, you know. Como se llama usted? Me llamo Esteban. Okay? But this is a reflexive verb. Calling yourself something. You're doing the action to yourself. I call myself Stephen. Okay? So that's one that we don't do in English. We just say my name is. But in Spanish they say I call myself. Now, here's another one that's a little bit different. We're going to look, look down at your hand out at the second example. Cortarse. Okay? Now the verb cortar means to cut. But cortarse means to cut yourself. Now this isn't really talking about cutting yourself though. Notice I put in parentheses hair, nails, okay. We would say, I cut my hair. I cut my fingernails. But in Spanish, they say this differently. Whenever you're doing something to a part of your body, they express this a little bit differently. So, if we have this word cortarse, okay, which means to cut, okay, but it's reflexive. So basically, we would say this. Me... Corto, okay, and then look at the last word on your vocabulary list, el pelo, the hair. So we would actually say in Spanish, me corto el pelo, okay? So instead of saying, I cut my hair, this would literally be saying, I cut myself the hair, okay? <laughs> so it doesn't really make sense to us, right? But because when you're cutting your own hair, you really are doing the action to yourself, and so that's why they do it this way. Me corto el pelo. Now look at the second to last word on your list there. The nail, like your fingernails, your toenails. So if I wanted to say, I'm cutting my nails, okay? Who, who knows how to say that? I'm cutting my nails. What will we start with? Me corto. And then we're going to use a plural, right? Plural form. Me corto las uñas. Okay? Now, let's say I wanted to say, I'm washing my hands. Well, again, in Spanish, when you're doing something to a part of your body, it, you're doing it to yourself in Spanish. Okay? In English, we don't say it. We just say, I'm washing my hands. But in Spanish, if we wanted to say, I'm washing my hands, we would say, me lavo... I wash myself, the hands, you know, la, los manos, okay, getting back to lavarse, me lavo, oh, whoops, my mistake, me lavo los manos, me corto el pelo, me corto las uñas, or we could use this in another person, we could say, um, nos lavamos, and keep in mind, this pronoun and this verb should always agree when it's a reflexive verb. Nos lavamos los manos is going to mean what? We're washing our hands. We wash our hands. Nos, nos lavamos los manos. Okay? So the thing that you need to remember is that whenever you're dealing with a part of the body, it's reflexive. Okay? If you're washing your hands, if you're washing your feet, if you're cutting your hair, if you are uh, doing any of these things, it's always going to be a reflexive verb because the same person who's doing the action is the one on whom it's coming. So think about what the word reflection means, right? You look at yourself in the mirror, there's a reflection. That's why these are called reflexive, because it's you doing it to yourself, okay? The, the action is coming back upon you. That's why it's called a reflexive verb, okay? Now, aside from that, there are also other verbs that are just reflexive in Spanish, even though you're not doing the action to yourself necessarily. 
they're just reflexive because that's just the way they are. Like, for example, look at the third on the list. Because the first one was, you know, washing yourself, cutting your nails, painting your hair. But look at the last one. Aburirse. Aburirse means to get bored. So if we were to translate this literally, you're kind of saying, I bore myself. Okay. But you're not really, you're not really boring yourself. Okay. Like, let's say you're sitting in church and it's really boring. You know, the sermon is boring. You know, you'd say, me, look down at, at your thing there. Yo me aburo. Now it doesn't mean that you're boring yourself because you find yourself so boring. Okay, it's just a reflexive verb in Spanish. That's just how it is. You just, if you want to say I'm getting bored, you say me aburo. It's the exact same thing in German. You say ich langweile mich. I'm boring myself. It's the same type of thing. A lot of languages have reflexive verbs like this. So how would I say, with, given what we know here, how would I say Matthew is getting bored? Like, I look over at Matthew and I say, you know what? Matthew's getting bored. How would I say this in Spanish? I'm going to start with what? The subject, right? Yeah. Okay. Which would be what? Mateo. Okay. And then which, uh, which reflexive pronoun am I going to choose? Say, right? Third person singular. So, Mateo, say. And then we're going to need to uh, conjugate our verb here. Aburir. So, we're going to take our stem, which is... Abur, and then we're going to throw the proper ending on, which would just be an E. Mateo se abure. Okay, and that means Matthew is getting bored. Okay. So does anybody have any questions about that? So now let's go down our list here and, and see what we missed. Yamase. <coughs> we already talked about that. To call oneself. Como se llama usted? How do you call yourself? Me llamo Esteban. Okay, we went through that. Lavarse, to wash oneself. But this is not just washing yourself, but any part of your body, right? Me lavo los manos. El se lava el pelo. What would that mean? El se lava el pelo. What, look, the words on your book, okay, it's the last word there. El se lava el pelo. What would that mean? He's what? He, because el se lava, we're talking about somebody else. He is washing his hair. But we don't say his hair. We just say the hair in Spanish. We say, el se lava el pelo. Okay? And then we have cortarse, to cut. And it's reflexive, meaning, you know, to cut your hair, to cut your nails, to cut something on your body. So you could say, for example, nos cortamos el pelo. We're getting our hair cut, or we're cutting our hair. Okay? Aburirse, to get bored. You could say, Te abures. You're getting bored. Admit it. Okay. And so uh, then you can say afetarse, to shave oneself. Again. So if I said, uh, how would we translate this into, Spanish, into English? Ellos se afetan. What would that mean? They are shaving. If I want to say they are shaving, it would be ellos se afetan. Okay? So uh, remember, the verb has to match. The pronoun every time, because it's reflexive. The next one, ducharse, to take a shower. Who wants to come up here and try this one? He is taking a shower. Come on up here, Junior. He is taking a shower, and the verb is going to be ducharse. Okay? So give that a shot. He's taking a shower. Not they, though. This is going to be singular. Just he. Just he's taking a shower. Real close. What is uh, this this word right here? Okay, that's got to be third person. Because right now, that's remember the as is what the second person. 
that's like your, that would be like, your taking a shower would be like, te duchas. But if we're saying he, yep, very good, excellent. So if he's taking a shower, it's el se ducha. So we notice that the, the noun, the reflexive pronoun, and the verb all agree. They're the same number, same person, right? El se ducha. He is taking a shower. Very good. All right, and then what's the next uh, word on the list after ducha is saying? Somebody. Akabarsi. Akabarsi. Okay, here's another one that's a little bit different. And, you know, it, in these classes, I try to have stuff that's easy and stuff that's hard because some people are at different levels that are in the class today. So if some of this goes over your head, you can just focus on some of the easier examples about, you know, cutting your hair and cutting your hands. But this is a verb that's actually very useful. Acabarse, this is something I use a lot when I'm talking to people when I'm out soul and giving them the gospel in Spanish because acabarse means to come to an end. It means to basically to, to finish, to, to stop, okay? So if we want to use the verb acabarse, let's say I'm talking about eternal life and I'm trying to explain to somebody about salvation, and I usually ask them this question, ¿Qué significa la palabra eterna? Okay? ¿Qué means what? I just told you, it means what? So ¿Qué significa, the, the verb significar, you know the word in English, signify? Okay, it means what does it mean? ¿Qué significa la palabra? We've had that word before, what's it mean? The word. ¿Qué significa la palabra eterna? Okay, so this is a question. And I'm at, what am I asking with that question? What does the word eternal mean? ¿Qué significa la palabra eterna? Okay. And uh, there are some, answers, some good answers to this that I'm, I'm just trying to make sure because, you know, when you're giving people the gospel, sometimes we assume that they know what spiritual terms in the Bible mean, but we, we really need to take the time to explain to people the, what things in the Bible mean because to us, the word eternal is second nature, but a lot of people don't even know what that means, believe it or not. And so it's always good when you're giving the gospel to be very thorough and explain what everything means. So I always ask the question, ¿Qué significa la palabra eterna? And a couple answers for that would be like, you know, para siempre, you know, means it, it lasts forever. But another useful explanation when you're explaining to somebody <laughs> what eternal means, and really the most accurate definition is it means it will never end. Because our English word eternal, basically the E is a prefix that means not, okay? And this part of the word right here was kind of the root of the word eternal, it comes from the same root word as the, our word terminate. Something to end, okay? Termination or a terminal illness, okay? Eternal means not ending. Everlasting is really the opposite. It means it's going on forever. So they both mean the same thing from two different angles. One means it's going to go on forever. One means it's not going to end, okay? So eternal means never ending. So a sentence that I'll often use to explain to people what the word eternal means, I'll say this. And we've had this as a vocabulary word. Does anybody remember what it means? Nunca? Anybody remember? Never. Never. Very good. So nunca means never. So if I want to say, hey, eternal means, que significa la palabra eterna, I want to say it means it's never going to end. Okay? So the way that I'm going to say that in Spanish is nunca. And I want to use this part. And this is difficult again. So if you're a beginner, you may want to just tune me out right now. But... Okay, acabarse, right? Which means to come to an end. Sure. Now, what, what are we talking about here when we say it's not going to come to an end? We're talking about like eternal life. So where would that be on this chart here? Is that myself? Is that you? Or is that a third person? This one, right? Because we're talking about life. Life is not me or you or we or them. It's it. This right here would be what? He, she, or it. Okay, falls under this third person category. So if we want to say eternal life, or the word eternal means that something, it, is never going to end. So we know we're going to be using this pronoun right here, right? And then uh, when it comes to our verb, akabab, if we were to conjugate that, that would be what? Akabo, akabas, akaba. And which one do we need to use? Obviously, you know, we don't need to go any further because that's what we're using right there. Okay, so we're kind of putting together the pieces here. 
We know that, I'm just going to list the words, then we're going to put together in a sentence. We got nunca, never. We got our verb, se acaba, right? Okay? But are we talking about present tense or are we talking about future tense? Future, because we're not saying it's never ending right now. We're saying it's never going to end. 